we're with Dr. Gerd Arfarth of Heidelberg, Germany, and he is doing something unique at this um, making at this meeting. He is doing he is planning to continue the legacy of Dr. David Apple by moving his total research operation to Heidelberg. Can you um, outline for us what your what your plans are? Well, uh, over 20 years ago, I was working for David in his lab in uh, Charleston, South Carolina, as, as a young fellow. Yeah. Now uh, I've grown up and I'm uh, the chairman of the uh, Heidelberg uh, University Eye Clinic. And this is a huge clinic, one of the most traditional uh, eye clinics in Germany, I have to say. And this uh, clinic has all the facilities that are important for a modern uh, a research lab, especially for biomaterial and intraocular lens and cataract surgery uh, kind of research. And uh, when Dr. Apple passed away, he donated and his wife, they donated uh, the entire contents of the lab to the Heidelberg University in order to give me the chance to rebuild uh, uh, his uh, uh, research lab, to restart it, to continue his legacy, or even to uh, uh, continue with his vision in ophthalmology, which was not only intraocular lenses, which was bio devices in general, cataract surgery in general, and also the idea of having an international lab where fellows from all over the countries can come and can learn ocular pathology and can work on these products. What's, so where are we now? Do you have a, you have a location in Heidelberg? Yes, uh, we are now at the point where the entire lab was uh, packed in boxes, shipped over in a container to Heidelberg. We have unpacked everything. We have now uh, filled uh, our lab space with uh, the, uh, the charts and the specimens and uh, all the equipment from the lab. So we have an operational laboratory right now already. We are still waiting for a couple of machinery that we have ordered in order to analyze specific things. We want to go beyond uh, the things that Dr. Apple was capable of doing in, in Charleston. We have contact to some other institutes in our university. So we will do it on a very broad base. Yeah. So do you have uh, staff and uh, some of the old uh, staff from work that have worked with Dr. Apple in the past with you? On the, on As a matter project? of fact, uh, uh, I have uh, one fellow who used to work with Dr. Apple in, in the past, I have a research group of 10 people who are also now working for the David Apple Lab, but we will recruit also international fellows and we will give out stipends for fellows, which is also one of the uh, uh, messages we want to get out, that the lab is now open for applications of fellows internationally interested, postgraduate or postdoc fellows who are interested in this kind of research and they can come for a one-year fellowship, for example, uh, to our lab and work under the same condition that I have been working uh, 20 years ago with David. Now, will um, the, in the U.S., will that still will it still be an operation still in the U.S. in Charleston? We still have in, in Charleston uh, two people, uh, staff, which uh, is there in order to collect and to ship over specimens from the U.S. because I think it's kind of complicated for the U.S. surgeon to send things overseas and it doesn't meet the hassle, so this can be sent to the same address uh, there was before, and these people will take care of the specimens and organizing transport and organizing reports and uh, communication between the lab and the uh, sending surgeon, referring surgeon. What made you decide to go, is this something that David Apple wanted to do and you just took it on, or is this something now, that the you, thing approached, is, you approached? Dr. The Apple was kind of like my scientific father. Uh, being in his uh, in his lab at that time gave me uh, brought a lot to me, yeah, man, uh, humanly and also in my, my my development of my character and my scientific work. Afterwards, my career was very much based on the fact that I had my expertise from David, and I continued to go almost every year for the last 20 years to his lab and did studies with him. I even sent fellows from Germany to his lab, so there was a constant exchange over 20 years. And it was kind of natural development. We were already thinking about moving the lab over to Heidelberg when he was still alive. We got a, a humble stipend for him as a professorship in Heidelberg. So he was supposed to come over for a couple of months and then we wanted to install the lab. Unfortunately, his illness prevented him from coming to Heidelberg. So we couldn't do that. But this is something which was not born as a new idea, which was developing 
gradually over the years and it was like a natural development um, in this period. That, that's incredible news. Thank you, Dr. Gar Dr. Very welcome. All right, thank you.